So the first speaker coming to the stage is a self-taught cultivator and lifelong student of psychoactive fungi. He has a primary focus in the exploration of fungi and his mission and his mission in life is to cultivate a relationship with any and every psychoactive fungi he comes across while maintaining a low-tech approach that is hands-on and personal to develop accessible approaches to working with otherwise difficult fungi. He is an educator and advocate for fungi often, often overlooked by the broader and mainstream psychedelic culture. Having direct experience in cultivation of several distinct species across multiple genre, his approach and philosophy of life is one rooted in nature, relationships, and the pursuit of happiness. Please welcome Stieg Mycelia. Trees outside my mom's window seem so far away and faded like a child's dream. To an inside observer, outside was foreign and wild, unrecognizable and wonderful. My friend, seated on the couch beneath the painting, always came to life during these experiences. Staring at his face, the couch around him shattered with the blocks like the final strike from Jenga's tower. I lean together to maintain the couch's form. Like a wild animal, that wavering collection of cubes, reds, and oranges, merged and spread to his being. His skin now blocky yet dramatically original. I've been here before, seen this place before. The air grew in blues and sapias as the flowing collection of cubes consumed all life within not consumed as it took over, but consumed as it adapted life to its form and movement. We were living in a Picasso fever dream, in some regard, similar to dreams I used to have as a child. Alone in my bed late at night, the walls bordering on black from the shadows consuming my dark blue walls. A light from under the door flicks on and shines Chatting and excitement. There's a party going on inside my room. Fear strikes my heart. Bed sheets around me constrict my brain. Almost like cellophane, which suffocates stakes at the store. The chattering gets louder and louder as the group of partying ne'er do wells draws near. My bedroom door drifts further and further away from me. My perspective shifts to the third person view. That perspective lens growing smaller and smaller. That shrunken squeeze of preservation. The chattering is directly outside my door, yelling and laughing. It sounds joyous, but in my heart it's utter fear. The door flies open, flooding my dark room with a painful warm light. My eyes blinded by the sudden exposure within my room. We were riding our bikes around the nearby lake, laughing and talking, not caring about the people that surrounded us. Gliding across the pavemented waves, and in some instances riding uphill when we should have been going downhill. This place is weird, we thought. Steering left turned us right, or did steering right turn us left? Around the lake we went, trusting in our bodies to remember how to ride these bikes for us past the boat docks, and past the old wise ones of our past. Our excitement turned to paranoia as the once normal people around us had adorned makeup akin to Alex's droops. Faster and faster we paddled to escape the peering eyes of these nefarious people around us. But the faster we pedaled, the further our destination ran. We were at a standstill pedaling as fast as we could on a pavemented treadmill. The end of the trail came further and further away. I blinked my eyes. In that endless moment, we traveled miles. My eyes opened and went back home. Late night walks around the neighborhood, each and every tree a figment of imagination. 
they're all the same, offset ever so slightly as to not raise suspicion of their sameness. Those are the boulevards of perception. Each sidewalk block a recurring step in the same circular direction. Every house slowly fading into that colorful veil hung over my weary eyes. Fixated on that fabrication of the seamstress's quandary. Lost in the fabric of that misstitched reality. Minutes turn to hours. The night sky passing through time. Oh, here I am again at my back door. Momentary glimpses of my image and the reflections of glassy projections. A crack pops. And from the origin, thin threads of shattering real glass crackle out like a spider's web ravaged by the wind. But it's not the glass of the door that's cracked. It's the glass lens of my shattered retinas. The cracks emigrate through my now porcelain body as the pieces all separate and fall scattered across the floor. An attempt to reconfigure the broken pieces results in a misconfiguration with holes in my body to let others in. Or perhaps, just a trick of the fairies at play. Three of them squeeze in like a mouse through a pinhole, taking up residence within my mind and body. They crowd my mind and usher my exit, alluding to the curtain's call of a performance in Pundi. They take turns controlling my body, pulling the strings of this fleshy marionette. An argument breaks up. Curses and hate skewed from each party, taking turns through my voice and movement. All I can do is watch as my body is reduced to puppetry between these beauty beings. A knife is drawn, the scent of disdain wretchedly waving from lifeless limbs at the edges of distant sandy garages. The strings of control severed in one erratic slash. Peace. Soft beige mist floats through the room, catching the sun rays shining through the windows above. The faint smell of those fake flowers in my grandma's house slowly invading my nostrils. A lightness in my head and a deep, low, worried hum echoes softly and grows louder and louder with every passing moment. First my toes, then my legs, then my torso erased from thought. Am I breathing? My head is soaring through space at high speeds. A swirl of colorful blurs whiz past my vision until my head splatters against some unseen surface. Flesh and blood is flung outwards and paints the inside of this expansive, invisible room. Deep reds and oranges seep. In some regard, it is comforting and warm. Like the violence of heavy rain, Pattering on illuminated windows, that sigh of calm from audio serenity. The natural paint drips and soaks into every nook and cranny of this place. As it does, the dimensionality is revealed and the depth is better understood. Hallways of faces and corridors of bodies extend outwards in every direction, extending on indefinitely. As I observe the intricacy of what lies before me, taking a less critical view of specifics lends these hallways and corridors to blend together the bodies and faces into a singular being. Reassurance and love is echoed through the air before I am pulled away and returned to mangled exposure. Echoes bounce across the still water that spread out away from me. I'm in a canoe, slowly paddling through an ancient aqua. Grandiose pillars and arches made of medieval stonework line the edges of the duck. There's an eerie silence to this place. I'm not alone. Past the stonework, a vast expanse of dust-ridden plain extends outward, far below, far below my sight fading into the darkness of the night. Four-legged beings roam out there, subtly illuminated by flashes from dark clouds hovering above. 
massively rotund but hoisted by tall, spindly legs bent in sharp angles. Shepherds of what else roamed out there, too small to see in the night. Smatterings of dried, dried out branches and leafless woody vines latched and crawled across the cracked surface of the time worn masonry around me. It seemed to be a forgotten place. Though the water is still ran through. Paddling down this straight expanse of water unmoved by the peace and calm. Though as I traverse, the landscape delves into more surreal architecture. The previously Masonic arches and pillars meld into intricately starred carved stone walls, scenes of abundant flourishing cities, deities, and war stricken lands traverse these murals. As I move down the dock, the carvings entrance their implied movements to depictions of a civilization that came and went. Famine stricken lands, wars fought in desolation, and old crumbled walls of carvings demolished alongside humanity. Where have they gone? And who or what have carved the story? As the crumbled walls faded into empty canvas, shadowy perception outlines the swaying of grandfather's clock, the metronome of percussion maintaining that beat of aortic expression, seated above a small opening near the end of this place. It led into a deep, dark sewer lined in aged red bricks, lightly painted in inches and bricks, just large enough for me to continue my path. And so into that tunnel I paddled, leaving ahead the stories and history of that long lost land. Yellow water sits stagnant in the porcelain lake. Its eerie radioactive essence oozes into the walls and air of this place. The curious colors of illness seeps and soaks. My internal scream from the cage match raging inside. Unprecedented history of a blank mind struggling. Grueling sweat drips from my tired face. Mosaic tiles draw the heat from my body. In my head, I sob in pain as the fleshy fountain builds and pressure from the mineral clogs. Something isn't right here. Calcium frames creep as my vision blurs into peculiar reflection. Gaunt pools and rotting cadavers reflect my creepy grin. This too shall pass. Folded towels in the pantry dripping in mildewed water. This stagnant wetness wipes screeches through the chalkboard of my face, disrupting my dusty wardrobe. Under other circumstances, I may understand, though in this moment, I'm lost for words. Curled on mosaic tiles, I rest. Spiders and centipedes crawl from cracks in the planes between my eyes and reality. Tiny padded footfalls and rhythmic symphony draw nearer. Blank eyed faces glistening from potent venom. I can smell it. This pungent, citrusy, stringent hunger. I close my eyes as the hair on my skin wavers from clawed toes gently caressing over me, burrowing into the pores of my soul, nourishing the empty part in there. Peacefully cuddle in a racket soup. Cosmos above illuminating cracked pavers, blades of grass and clover beads pushing with all their strength. Disturbing the very stone I walk on. Misty clouds whisking through the big blue orb in the sky. Perpetually lost in this maze of residence. Manufactured nature and for what? Sunglasses to shade my eyes from the radiance emanating from the shadows. Photons of light passing through the very fabric of this planet. Breakneck snaps. Careening my head to the dark, glowing sky above, they found me. They see me. They're following me. 
I'm running. Shadows elongate around me, presenting their true demonic forms. This labyrinth of papers and tiny boxes, twists and turns, alleyways and street signs. All markers for insanity in this strange, strange world. It feels good to be lost. Their eyes burning holes in the back of my head, searing through my tinged flesh. The smell of burnt hair and searing steak fill my nostrils. If they keep looking, I'll continue onwards towards the dark passageways ahead. The air around me is thick, palpable, and material. I do not reside in open space. The illusory cave of mirrors and transparency. Stumbling through by touch and sensory input, I may as well be blind. They're right behind me, always following, always watching. Like a jaguar deep in the jungle, watching their prey. Well, these are no furry beasts of there, and I'm no meal to be enjoyed. Rather, I just hear Beige smoke whisks through my vision, careening through my senses and fogging my retina with questions. Silent hum of whispers growing louder in my internal drums. It's a little girl playing, laughing and crying. Every endless moment ages her. Every word evolves into an aged wise woman, grasping for breath into silence. There's a distant horn of a ship leaving port. I forgot my ticket. Guess I'll stay here a while. Familiar trees wrap and wave their chameleon bark. Tendrils of information glowing through their veins. I used to speak this language. Perhaps I don't know this dialect. I can feel salty tears flow down my cheeks. I'm not sad. I'm happy. Smoke billows out from under my feet. Harsh and invasive. It's just difficult to breathe in this brimstone. Pay no mind to the fire raging beneath me. <laughs> to the ra fire raging beneath me until the smoke invades my mind and compels me to satiate this fire's needs. Crystalline flowing water fills the room in my hands. A social event of the ages. An orgy of liquid desires. The raging river eddies. Poured over hot coals, the hiss of ecstasy as burning thirst below is quelled. Plumes of soot and relieved smoke nourish the aromas of my head. Dancing beauties formed of gnarled wooden knots, prancing eloquently in their desire. Wooden shutters, the plague of their lands, consecrated into the landscape of my reality. Still and unmoving, dance eases me into paralysis. Scattered the dancers fall as their wooden world is shaken from outside. Floodlights illuminate the cracks between their world and mine. Serpentine slithers of the desert rattles the spells the gatherings of the timber rituals. Bright white light consumes the being of my eyes while the hypnotic rattles of imminence draws closer. Lanky shadows. Thin fingers creep. Shrouded in cloaks of darkness, they watch me from the crack. The hiss of light escapes my iris, bending around me so darkness invades my sensation. Constricting echoes of rattles emanate through my, through my head, leaving behind silence. Cold shock of rough stone beneath me. Adjusting to dim gray light illuminating this place. A solitary plinth of stone, carved and mastered, reminiscent of that ancient aqueduct. Perspective independent of bodily containment, though restricted by the claustrophobic mob of sentience surrounding me. They have me now. Silent observers peer through beaded eyes. Their gangly extremities limp with purpose. Unrelenting care and curiosity in their language. The 
exposing intrigue and forceful gaze, they remained staring into the thoughts of my head. Empty and white clean. Memories of when or where stained their understanding in those black, glittered eyes. Open eyes to bright, dry sun baking in this dusty land. Mirages of liquid waves flow over the horizon. The sun beating submission to my burning body. Distant trembles of conjured earthquakes ripple through the sand into my cheek. I gave a thousand running feet headed this way. Tilting my head over, sand dripping from my cheek. I gaze over the thousands of people behind me. Blood painted into their dusted skin, cosmic adornments of destructive tattoos. They say it. Memories of their past reflected in their eyes. Loved ones slain at the hands of those charged Cities ravaged into the very dust that swirls around us. The flowing knowledge of water dried up by the conjurers of the fire in the sky. Plant relatives strangled in their sleep by salty storms. The rumble of stamping feet disturbs the distant mirage. Lines of heat turn to dancing patterns. Distant roars of battle slowly rising into the heavy heat. This is where we die again. This is where our blood will sow the land back to health. This is where we sacrifice our flesh for our memory. Together we run as one. The stampede of vibration from each side, convening in the middle, raising giants made of sand and stone. The wall of air pushed in, swirling together to create vortexes of storms, stripping what is left of the water from the very earth we ran on. Drying the ground to the very bone, cracking it along the surface, emanating valleys and voids shrouded in dust. <coughs> As we near this convening of force, the air grows humid. Bad breath of the sickness this land holds, seeping cracked pores in their dried out skin. Dark clouds can mean and thunder as sparks, swirling above us as a determined fate draws near. The air and emotion swells into a thick veil of hallucination, protecting our conscience from impending treachery. Our past flashes before us in the dust, Blinded by the memories of what we're being shown, we can only feel the thrashing of weapons tearing through our flesh, the subtle resistance and dripping of ours sliding through theirs, the feeling of blood running down our bodies, interlacing with the now pouring rain from the heavens above, rumbles of thunder drowning out the screams of pain and misery echoing the purpose and desire for this land. Ravaged, we all lie together as one, bleeding our lives into the soul of this place, the rain washing our offering deep into the cracks of this place, satiating the starvation of this land. Glittered fairies ushering in helping me. Picking up and placing the broken fragments of my shattered retina. With each reconfiguring new kaleidoscopic realities hold. Twisting and shaping the very nature of being around me. The captain's looking glass signaling the point I was heading. Distant, off in the sea, a lonely island isolated from this salty place. The burnished plates of a lone tree glinting in mystical sunlight. A twist of the focus. Pinch of the fairy, snapping the next piece in place. The maple tree's leaves shining red through their outstretched, veiny fingers. Skin stretched thin, 
pigmentation glowing as blood swells into the area. The sap runs deep. Nectar of life. Collaborations of tree and water carried with an ancient knowledge of this place. Fractured scenes slowly pieced together, light reflecting through illuminating darkness of memories. Tears seep through the cracks in my eyes, sunken down in awe and gratitude. The hum leaves my ears, and I'm refreshed to the thought of the setting sun. A monkey alone in the desert, smashing through glass bottles with stone tools, slowly chipping away the fractured reality of this lassie existence, boring a hole through the plane, separating the air on either side of this transparency, blowing crystalline dust away from his work. Now he can breathe that fresh air, no longer trapped on this side of the glass. For what? Fashion a tool to illuminate the aroma of familiar scents he knows nothing of. Ineffable inspiration contained within this furry dome. There I sat, the beige vapor of serenity ruminating in this space, the hum of inescapable urge propelling me through this hypnotic veil, containment of ideas and thoughts not found for this world collapse into the ether. The grand reconstruction of age architecture reconvenes in my periphery. Deep hallways of purples and blacks extend and bend within this manner. But where is the count? Navigating this trickster's palace runs me in circles and loops, following glimpses of mirrored reflections escaping the grasp of Iris's convictions. The faces of those lost in this place ripple through the folds of the hallways in Passageways emerge from open mouths. Hot, humid breath escapes from within these dungeons. Dim lights illuminate shadows creeping along the sentient carvings, expressing emotion through their fractured faces. Horror and suffering painted starkly in these walls. A living house of detestable psychic onslaught. Whispers of death and deplorability creep through cracks in the holes. I stumble through the jungle of corridors to an open dining hall of whomever resides here. They're all waiting. All seated in a half moon around the emptiness that bends reality around its essence. There's one stone left. I take my seat. Cold, hard stone beneath me anchors me to my decided fate. Those around me seemingly extend off to either side, curved into the darkness beyond. They all sit, unaware of my presence, or perhaps on the moon. Supposed it's statues of people, their faces obscured by blocky helmets, though it's clear these are the lost ones. They're now obscured faces, the ones writhing in the walls of this place. The centerpiece of this dining hall reverberates the scene around me, curating the thoughts to match its own twisted desire. Even so, the intricate flow of hallways screaming the names of those lost wiggle through this space, extending outwards from this centerpiece, twisting and turning like tentacles of an octopus. Though perhaps this is just the illusion of the one Lurking in the periphery, they watch, escaping the dart of my eyes only to appear on the other side. Those familiar, languid bodies, so effortless in their movement, always escaping the dim light circling the space. I exist here for one reason, for them to watch, or so I thought. Their cool breath rushes down my spine as those spindly fingers caress over my torso. Like a masterful pianist, their fingers trace melodies up my neck and obscure my eyes, engulfing my head in their hands. They dig their fingers deep into my face, 
grip me in tight. Their bony tips roll into my skin, oozing into the divots recessed in my flesh. They pull, tearing my whole skin. I can feel my skull crack along the ridge, my skin stretching before slowly ripping apart, the pop of my muscles detaching from my skeleton cool breath, chilling my exposed brain. Their fingers leave my face and cause the split dome to flop over under their own weight, like a banana's peel pushed aside. They massage my brain, dipping their fingers into the creases of my cranium. Deeper and deeper they prod those thin, cold fingers. As if I were some sort of visionary instrument, they plucked my cerebral strings and tapped my consciousness. Their song became a vision of my past since forgotten. My childhood played through me like a living experience. Again, there I was a child being brought oatmeal from the can, seated upon cold tiled floors, running my fingers through spongy moss and the forest. The sound and smell of rain tapping on my bedroom window. Freshly fallen snow melting on my cheeks laughing at nothing, smiling at birds, sleeping peacefully lost in distant dreams. Cerebral fluid streams down tears of cranial joy. The artistry of Hannibal's encumbrance tickled into the folds of my heady intestines. A long, dusty bridge through bright white emptiness, thin air easy to breathe. Ethereal weightlessness makes movement effortless. This vacuum of space depletes sound before it can travel. Glinted patterns twinkle like soft wind wind chimes through this white air. Slowly walking to the pearly gates that lie before me, nearly invisible in the light. The lines and shapes of this doorway seemingly inviting and squinting eyes. Twisting plumage of dark gray smoke rips from the empty white depths. A rogue dust devil puffed from the old man's pipe. A two-faced tornado sent to guard the sanctity of this game. The old man's ember long gone. Stoked through this world of smoke, the faces of the lost ones embedded into the nature of this plume. These faces a cloak of stitched skin and emotion, sewn together in some smoky collage of individual understanding and expression. From the depths of this living cloak, his face could be seen, undulating shadows adjusting the nature of his face. Crooked smiles and sinister grins, devilish laughter and nephilim folks. Those eyes, empty and full, Discipline tunnels into the darkness within. Those eyes never change despite the endless reconfiguration of emotive facial construction. Perpetual representation of thought and perspective referenced through shadowed skin. Those eyes seared into mine, that reminiscence of aromatic sizzling state, stretching my pupils like two hands widening the hole in fabric exposing every receptor within my eyes to the emptiness of their gaze. Tunneling through the back of my head and riding the synapses of my optic nerve, delivering shock therapy to my muddled brain. Electricity ran through my nerves while these cold eyes picked clean every morsel of my internals, staring into the face of this being I waited. Their gaze softened. Their screaming cloak writhed in a mob of voices and arguments, crawling their way around this figure, shrouding them in their skin and hair. Pulling tighter and tighter, wrapping more and more, shrinking and throbbing like a shrunken head. The old man inhaled deeply, and the plume of smoke still emanating from below whistled and spiraled pulling the skin cloak beam down with it back from whence they came. The door before me creaked as it slowly turned. Mm -hmm. Taking a step forward, I moved through the small gap in the doors, 
pushing through the thick air that held this world at bay, I slipped through and into this new space, near antithesis. Darkness reigned supreme. Though from out my periphery the little ones came, with almost reckless abandon they rushed in, mob of hundreds, wiggling in their worthy way, surrounding me from every direction filling in every gap in my imagination. Their skin brown and tan, gray and white, leathery and warm. They had been waiting. In joyous celebration, they began to sing, for they sang through echoed silence. Their songs wrapping through this dark space and illuminating it. As they sang, the abstract nature of each song began to weave in and out of each other's notes, timing them together in bundles of ideas. These ideas would break off from the group's melody and develop their own sentience, sewing the threads of the original notes into familiar faces. A tailor's tautology of veiled intentions. At first it wasn't clear. Though over time, these independent release melodies began to shape themselves into the very trees I knew so well, into the sky and stars that lived above me. The age-worn deck I sat on in my mother's backyard, blackened beneath from Brimstone's breath. The songs echoed into spirits of squirrels rustling in the night, crickets chirping and frogs croaking. The wiggling ones sang reality back into my head. When they were done, fizzled off into the very air of hope, leaving one by one, wishing you well, bestowing me with prayers of safe passage. Perhaps it was time to went home. Slowly and methodically, the flittering waves of confusion settled themselves into reminiscent shadows and blurred images of found faces. Silent footsteps sink deep into the soil, embracing the cushioned encapsulation of the earth consuming my every step. Orchestral awakenings of Mother Nature's gifts echo familiar lullabies easing this tired mind. Water suspended in time and space soaks into this withered and dried out corpse, flowing new life into the cracked crevices of my skin, like our blood in that one place long ago. The loops of time ease my split soul back into one, stitching the pieces back together, reconfiguring the container of my conscience. Oh, those pale threats of busted seeds. Memories flood in through ancient canals, rushing through the waterways of my mind. Primordial language returns through writings on the stone walls, the translations of reintegration to this long forgotten land. Slowly I make my way back. New life breathed into my soul through the puffs of smoke from nature's ever burning. Thank you. 